Good morning. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Free Press Media Press Inc. and Alternative Parties Books Publisher sponsors this podcast. I'm Andrew Bouchard. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Alternative Parties friends, we have another exciting guest on the podcast today. And we're going to talk about a topic we haven't talked about before, yet it's a very important topic, so I'm looking forward to it. We're going to talk about term limits, and we have an individual named Clyde Gray. So welcome to the podcast, Clyde. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Clyde, let us get started by you kindly giving us an introduction to yourself, a brief biographical sketch. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I, I'm actually a legal immigrant. I came here when I was very young from Germany and uh, uh, had a really poor and unusual childhood. Uh, so I ended up uh, at the age of 18 being a homeless person on the streets. And uh, it's because of this great country that I was able to get up on my own, start my own business, and uh, become self-employed, which I've been for the last 50 some odd years. And uh, I've been able to actually help other people out because of our success. And I also was a uh, host and a co-writer for a PBS series on woodworking because I'm a master woodworker now. And now I'm semi-retired. I still do construction, uh, kitchen and bathroom models. I do uh, woodworking projects and art and that sort of thing. Uh, and also, I had uh, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to run for the U.S. Senate. And uh, interestingly enough, I ran against a candidate who was not so well-known then by the name of Kamala Harris. So I got oh, to learn quite a bit about the political structure uh, by doing that. And I'm also a community activist. So now I'm so in Central go, California. Okay, Pardon? California. Yes. So you're from California? Uh, yes, I've spent all my life in California since I came here from Germany. All right. So if yeah, we've, you we've got the great right weather here. Yes, yeah, I hear that it's about perfect in California. Uh, everything except the government. Oh, no. <laughs> we have the highest taxes. We have, uh, it's craziness here, but, oh, well. That's why I started the, uh, the website, We the People Term Limits, uh, it applies to the federal level. But, uh, you know, I've been, since I was a kid, I've been hearing about term limits. And I realized that they will never put term limits upon themselves. They love their benefits. They love their jobs. They're not giving it up. And uh, our website is very simple that if you don't vote for anybody running in the 13th year in three election cycles, we will clean out the D.C. swamp. Uh, because when I ran as a candidate for the U.S. Senate, I found out very quickly how how rigged the system was, in California especially. It was set up uh, so that two Democrats go through. I ran as an independent. And if you weren't a Democrat, you weren't getting into the system. It was that simple. Yes, I've heard about the dominance of Democrats over in your state. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, they're lining their pockets with our tax dollars. So can we tell us, how you define term limits as a good place to start with our discussion of what the, your term limit activism. What are term limits? Most people uh, term limits the would, concept. So go right. Ahead. Uh, the term limits basically, Thomas Jefferson quoted it really well. It says, if you don't have term limits, then you have tyranny. And hmm. because most of the people in our, in office, if you look it up on our website, have been in there 30, 40, and 50 years. Uh, Biden's on his 51st year in the government and uh, with term limits and that means that at a certain amount of time you're out of office because when the founders first put this country together the idea was that you come in and do two or three terms and then get out and get some fresh new ideas but these people who are now in office uh, is, and we're talking uh, primarily at the federal level think about it all the laws that they impose on us they are exempt from uh, the vaccine mandates do not apply to the, the Congress. Um, insider trading, they say it's not legal, but they're not punished for it, so they do it anyway. Uh, you know, they vote on their own pay raises. Any law they put forth, they are exempt from, and that, that is wrong, totally wrong. So what term limits is about, uh, from our perspective, is simply by not voting for the 13th term, that means they get two terms in the Senate or six terms in the Congress. And that's more than enough time to do whatever you're going to do, because once you get beyond that, uh, you start becoming a political elite, and you get used to the idea of the ba- big paycheck and insider trading and the making millions. And uh, this latest thing between, like, Pelosi and her husband, he had a DUI, and it brought to light that 
they Pelosi's in the last five years have made $25 million on insider trading, which means all the bills going to the Congress, which she was aware of, she would find out, they would buy the stock, and then when it became a law that they promoted, they would make millions on the stocks. So uh, term limits will help stop that because the whole idea was you get in, you help. And, uh, you know, another thing that really surprised me uh, when I was running, you get a ton of paperwork. And one of the, the, the rules is when you are in the House or the Senate, you are not allowed to uh, generate funds politically because you have too much undue influence. And I was notified that should I even get in office, and I was one of the lesser candidates, that my first year I would be generating funds for the party or they would not even work with me. Uh. And, I mean, they were quite blatant about it. I, I was really shocked. Oh, my. Oh, I shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's why, yeah, we're trying to put this out nationally. And uh, because I know some of the states are trying to do term limits on the state level and stuff, which is great, but, you know, we can't even get the states to agree with each other nowadays. Oh, no. So, uh, and uh, that's where uh, your podcast came up through our research. And, uh, you know, we're on the same page, of you know, because the alternative party, and a good example is I ran as an independent. But as an independent, no funding available to me. The Republicans and Democrats had lots of funding, but if you weren't one of those two recognized parties, no funding is available to you. Yes. Yeah. So I had to do it on a shoestring and generate my own, you know, resources. And, and believe me, it, you know, it's a, a rich person's game. And, I mean, I have resources, but there's a point where after a while it's like, really? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to compete with Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, so, yes, go ahead. So here's the question for you. What I hear is a common argument against term limits to kind of explain how you counter it is, why we can vote people out, so why do we need the term limits? Isn't that an affirmation of democracy since we can we have the option of voting them out? How would you respond to that? Uh, we have the option of voting them out. Unfortunately, as most people are waking up or are aware that we have been heavily indoctrinated by the television industry, by the social media, and, uh, you know, to do what we're basically told. And, uh, for example, unions. If you're in a union, you are heavily influenced to vote a certain way because that's what the union wants. Um, you know, it's sad, but a lot of people who vote are not educated about who they're actually voting for. And there was an example of the, uh, we vote for our, uh, I'm in the county here, and we just had an election for the county supervisors. And uh, one of the, uh, the candidates was a friend of mine. She's an insurance agent, really great gal. And uh, I said, yeah, I'm voting for her. My neighbors, she is their agent as well. And I said, oh, so I'm sure you're voting for her. And they said, oh, no, 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 she can't because she's not a Democrat. And, I mean, we have been so indoctrinated into the party line that we're no longer looking at the best candidates. And so, unfortunately, people keep voting for people who are not right. I was just watching a documentary about a uh, California congressman who had been indicted for crimes and yet still got it reelected. And sadly, it's because the general public is no longer educated about the actual person. They are filled with party indoctrination. Uh, you know, I mean, they just don't literally know about the candidates. And when I talk to people, they are uh, painfully ignorant of what's going on and what this person's about and are they actually good for the community or the, the country. So, uh, sadly, we do need term limits. And, and they recognize this. The founders recognize this, that people don't always pay attention. So by having term limits, it does cause a changeover, and you get new ideas, and you get young people. And if you think about it, uh, in any, whether it's a job or not, when you first go in, you're very idealistic and full of energy. But if you find that there's uh, some kind of machine, then, the, you know, in business, there's machines as well, the uh, administrative machines that slowly grind on you and get you to where you just kind of go with whatever the flow is to make your life easier. And that's kind of what's happening in the Congress. I see. So, so that would be my response. That sounds good. That sounds good. So since we're a podcast for alternative parties, how do you see term limits benefiting alternative parties directly? Um. <clears throat> Well, it gives us more chance for alternative parties. 
Alternative parties is really a difficult thing because it's hard to get the funding. But if you have a constant turnover of the Congress and the Senate, you have more opportunity for new people to come in. Okay. Uh, and because the way the system is now, I mean, think about it. Most of the incumbents get reelected. And this is as evidenced by, if you look on our website, they're in there for 30, 40, and 50 years. If you change that over, you always have new people in. So people are willing to, with fresh eyes, look at new candidates who might be independent. As I recall, there was only one independent in the entire uh, uh, Congress. You know, and that's just sad. That's just sad. You know, there should yeah. be independents and libertarians. And, uh, but the the Democrats and the Republicans both have this in common, that they don't want a third party in there. They don't want any competition because they know they got a 50-50 shot at it. And if they don't get in office, it's like while the Democrats are in office now trying to take over the country, the Republicans are over here doing insider trading on our demise. So, uh, you know, I'm in favor of a third party, but it's really hard to get in. And recycling through the people is like a company. When you are starting to bring in new people, you're starting to get fresh ideas. And that, I think, would give more opportunity to, to third party candidates, whether they be libertarian or independent. Because I'm really in favor of third party, but the system is geared to keep them out. Sure. Sadly. So uh, this is where I'm a grassroots kind of guy, and that's why I say, you know, we the people need to <clears throat> all agree, and this is not a partisan thing, that regardless of your party, don't vote well for anyone running 13th year. And we will start getting some fresh blood in there, and we'll get some younger people, too. That's the other thing is, you know, they it's funny, the Democrats kept talking about all the old white guys that run the country, and what do they do? They elect an old white guy. Exactly. I mean, seriously, and this guy's not even with it anymore. I'm sorry, but this, <laughs> you know, my mom had Alzheimer's, and I recognize the, the signs, but they pretend it's not happening. Why and do you think they keep someone with Alzheimer's in? Pardon? Why don't you think the Democrats show somebody else besides someone with Alzheimer's? Well, they picked him because he had the history. Okay. Uh, you know, he'd been in there 50 years. He had the connections. And you got to remember, you know, in my opinion, it's called the Biden crime family who works with the Clintons, who is another crime family. And so they have all this money. They were getting tons of money from uh, Ukraine, and now we're at war with Ukraine. And what people understand, this is a distraction because we give money to Ukraine, and then they give it back to politicians. It's called money laundering, and, you know, nobody's looking behind the scenes. Another great example is the biggest thing on TV is Johnny Depp and, and Amber Heard, I think is her name. Yeah. But the fact is, nobody, not one person wants to hear about uh, Epstein and Glacine Maxwell. They have a pedophile ring that services all the major leaders throughout the world and the Congress, and not one word. She goes, she's guilty, and not one name came out. And they've got us all bamboozled. So watch your TV. You know, if you read books like 1984 and whatnot, I mean, it, it's, they predicted all this, and here we are. And another way to change that is through term limits. Get some fresh blood in there. Get some young people who are still idealistic and who like this country. So we do have term limits for the presidency. So why do you think we got it for the presidency but not the other offices yet? Uh, it's simple because the Congress knew that people wanted term limits. Okay? And rather than impose it on themselves, they agreed to join forces and impose it on the president. Because that's one guy. But if you're talking about the whole Congress, they're not going to do it for themselves. And that was a way to satiate the public and say, hey, look, see, you got your term limits. Okay. Okay, because what people don't realize is the president is, although a very powerful guy, a lot of the power resides in the House and the Senate. And the example of that, the most powerful woman in the world is Nancy Pelosi, a Speaker of the House. And who is her nephew? He's the governor of California, one of the largest economies in the United States. And people are missing that point. They think Biden has power. Biden's just a puppet. He doesn't even know what day it is. <laughs> you know, so Pelosi and Kerry and the Clintons are running behind them, uh, maybe the, Obama, the Obamas. You know, I don't have personal information to that extent, but it's becoming obvious. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's sad, but that's, you know, what's going on. And, again, it's time for us as people to say, you know, I, you know, I do not feel powerless anymore because a lot of people say, well, I'm so powerless, I can't do what's one vote. But if we all join forces and do this term limit thing, we start cleaning out Washington, D.C. And if that model works, then people will start applying to the states as well. 
So do you believe doing this through a constitutional amendment, or how do you plan on implementing term limits for Congress? Uh, well, the problem is getting an amendment. It's not, you know, it's not that easy to do because you've got to get the people in the Congress to back you up, and they're not going to do it. So my thought is that's why we do it this way. We don't vote for anyone in the 13th year. By the time you start cleaning out Washington, getting new people, the new people are going to back to the old way of instead of pleasing the corporations that have given them the millions of dollars to stay in office, they are trying to please their constituents, and they will listen to us. And then at that point, we might be able to get them actually start to propose it. I think it was Ted Cruz who proposed it this time around, but I've heard him propose it, and then a bill never comes even comes to the floor. So by having fresh blood in there and new people, you know, they aim to please. Who they going to please? Well, the voters, hopefully. And if that's the case, then they might listen to us and we can get a petition for term limits and get a bill brought to the, the House and hopefully get the Senate to pass it. So what objections do people have besides the one we talked about earlier about voting them out that people have put before term limits that you can overcome? Uh, run that by me again. What objections have people put forward to your organization's term limits, and how would you overcome those objections? Uh, oh, well, the uh, the main primary objection is because they're so good for our area. And the, an example of that is uh, Nancy Pelosi, who uh, brings a lot of pork to her area, which means you have pet projects that service your constituency and your little territory, and then you get reelected. The problem is that pork is not good for anybody. And if you look at the last two stimulus bills we had, more money went to foreign countries and to politicians than went to the American people on both stimulus bills. And so I remind people, you know, you got to look at what are they doing. Where's that money going? And a good example is uh, the, uh, oh, God, it's the New York, gosh, I just went blank. It's the Art Institute for, in uh, Washington, D.C., and uh, it's Nancy Pelosi's pet, and they got $25 million for the uh, the Art Institute there in, in D.C., and it cost $23 million to build it. Then on the next stimulus bill, they got $40 million, and they in turn started giving donations to politicians. It was money laundering, pure and simple. So uh, for people who say, you know, I like my person because I do a great job, great, I understand that. But we all have to understand that you might have a few people that are actually in there a long time doing a great job, but you can't make exceptions. You've got to have a set rule because the majority, and I guarantee you, the majority of the people in office are serving their own interests. They're not serving the American people. So sadly, we do occasionally have to sacrifice that. But those people can still come out and be community organizers. They can still do stuff independently. You know, because at that point, everyone out, coming out of the Congress is a millionaire, and they have connections like you can't believe. So it doesn't yeah. mean they can't get stuff done. You don't have to be in the Congress to get things accomplished. I mean, look at me. I'm a carpenter. I'm a grassroots guy. And, uh, you know, with our television show on PBS, we reach 4 million people. You know, and I'm a nobody. What so was the television show again? Oh, it was uh, for PBS, and it was called the uh, Pacific Western Workshop. And what it was is it was a, a thing about uh, building projects with just a small amount of tools rather than a complete workshop and, and designing from recycled materials. And we did a little side thing on gardening as well. Yeah, it ran in 2000, and we aired throughout the United States. Interesting. So it was about it was a fun project. Pardon? Self-sufficiency was about? Uh, yeah, it was. It's about how to build stuff for yourself out of scrap materials. Uh, you know, what did it, uh, if everyone who watches PBS probably knew about this old house, and it was about remodeling houses. But, you know, there are million-dollar budgets where most people couldn't afford it. And the lead carpenter was Norm Abram, who did a woodworking show. But you had to be a master carpenter with a really expensive shop. So I came up with my own version <coughs> using just, you know, $200 worth of hand tools and little power tools in your garage and building these projects. And, uh, and it went quite well. Sounds like It sounds like it's more accessible to the average person. That was exactly, exactly, and that was the idea to let you know that you don't have to be a master woodworker to build these projects, and you don't need thousands of dollars of tools. The whole idea is that you do a couple of hundred dollars, you could build every, all 13 shows, you could build any of the projects on the show for the $200 worth of tools, and, you know, each project, uh, 
Norm's last project required six hundred dollars in materials. Mine, the average price on materials is twenty bucks. That's not too bad at all. No, and I mean it's you know I'm a I'm that way. I'm a I was a solar contractor back in '81, so I'm a big advocate of solar. Unfortunately, it doesn't work yet, and they're trying to force it on us. And rather than that's another problem with Congress, you know, as Kamala Harris saying we need to have electric school buses. Well, that doesn't work. Solar car or electric cars barely work now because people don't realize that first you're mining the batteries, which is not green. Uh, at least a third of all the materials are plastics, which are fossil fuel products, and half of all the electric energy in the United States generated comes from natural gas or coal. <coughs> Excuse me. So they're not that green, and to make a school bus do that is next to impossible. It's absurd, and yet you know they're trying to force it on us by shutting down gas and oil. And uh, granted, gas and oil, we could approve on that, but the best thing they had was the hybrid, which actually got 50, 60 miles per gallon. And that was working. That's why they quit doing that, because mm -hmm. that was defeating their process, progress of being green, as they say. It's like now they shut down gas and oil saying, well, we need to be green, no gas and oil, but what are we doing? We're buying it from Russia and from Iran and from Venezuela, from people who don't like us. So we're still using gas and oil, and we're just paying more for it. And now... Mm -hmm. We have uh, cargo ships full of oil back in the oceans. Remember, we got rid of those because they were spilling oil. Now here they're back, and now they're telling us we're green. No, we're not. We're just paying more for gas and buying it from other countries. <coughs> and all these guys are making money on it. Al Gore, uh, you know, when they have carbon credits where if you mess with the environment and you screw it up, instead of fixing it, you can buy carbon credits from this country, this company, that says, okay, you're a good boy because you bought money, you paid for carbon credits. Well, he owns the company and he has to share of all the carbon credits. So he's making millions off this company. And the carbon credits don't fix anything. They just shift the blame. But people buy into it because he said it was a good thing and he made a movie. And, and uh, if you look at any of these people's houses, none of them drive electric cars. None of them have solar panels. All the stuff they're telling us to do, no, they don't have them. Obama tells us the, the sea level's rising, all the houses are getting flooded, and then he buys a house on the beach. Hmm. And, you know, again, why, this is why we need term limits. These guys have been in there too long. They've become the political elites, and they really don't care what the American people think anymore. You know, I mean, that's the impression I get. And I'm so just an average Joe. I'm sorry, so have other countries implemented term limits successfully? I believe so, and I, you know, I have to admit I haven't researched that. I believe they have. You know, it's interesting. Some countries have uh, presidents from other countries. I think it is it, uh, Chile, I think, has a Japanese president. Um, so, you know, you can do anything you want, that whatever works for your country. But the bottom line is what works and what's happening now is not working. I mean, how many times do you hear where there's a senator caught on this? Um, in fact, there was just a thing where he was a California congressman, and uh, his campaign money, he, was, he and his wife were embezzling hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they found out about it, and yet he got reelected three more times after that before he got convicted. Like, and the people knew it, and yet they reelected him anyway. It's like people need to wake up. I don't know. Uh, so, but right. changing you know, changing the guard, I think, is always a good thing, especially with politicians. Sure. You know. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Pardon? So, changing the guard keeps fresh blood in there, and it prevents people from yeah, fresh blood and fresh ideas. Because there's a lot of young people who agree and look around and say, "There's got to be a better way. How about this?" But you know the old guard's not going to do that because what they have now benefits them. They all make huge salaries. They all make money on insider trading. They all have backroom deals. So changing that out helps a lot. If you know you're only going to be in there for a limited amount of time, you might stick more to your ethics. And it's true in any position, even in business outside of politics. If you're in a company too long, you start thinking it's okay that you make six hundred thousand dollars a year, or where everyone else is making a minimum wage. I mean, how many? You know, Enron's a good example. I mean, they're they're no different than the government. You get a power structure, and the people on top start thinking that they have rights that you don't. The sad thing is, is the government makes laws that we are supposed to abide by. Yeah. 
So, Clive, for our audience out there, how can they support your organization and all the work that you do? Uh, oh, it's real simple. Go on our website, wethepeopletermlimits.com. And uh, what we're looking for is two things. One, like it, share it, tell your friends about it, and don't vote for anyone when you're near the 13th year. And another thing, so people know, I don't make any money on this. In fact, I'm upside down. I, I put a, a rather large investment to get this project rolling. And so any donations go directly to the social media company that is helping me out with this, and they use that for uh, Facebook ads and that sort of thing to get the word out. So this is not a – we're not a nonprofit because we didn't want to go through the government with all that nonsense, but it's just a direct grassroots movement where all the money goes directly for promoting this message throughout the United States. And that's the biggest thing they can say is like it and share it with your friends. And, uh, you know, Excellent. and believe that we can change it if we all join hands and vote properly. And, I, again, I don't care which party you vote for. You know, just don't vote for anyone running the 13th year, and that applies to all of them. And that's our message. All right. Sounds good. Thank you kindly for coming on the podcast today and sharing sure. about your organization and the philosophy behind term limits. Uh, thank you, and I appreciate uh, the uh, the chance to get our message out. All right. We wish you all the best in further getting the message out in all and also in all your personal and professional endeavors. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Take care and all the best. All right. All right. You too, Andrew.